Thank Tobias, you. Tobias, it's about digital experience. Digital, I have so many digital experiences. <laughs> the next talk uh, is by Shimon Gregorczyk. Uh, if I remember correctly, we had him last year as well. Yes, um, yes, and yes. It was a real pleasure to have uh, Shimon uh, give a presentation last year. And I'm very glad that uh, he submitted a talk for this year's conference as well. Uh, Shimon is a tech lead at 180 Heartbeats. Uh, working f for Jung von Matt, and he's a co-founder of GOAP. Uh, Shimon is based in Poland, and I do remember talking with him last year about having a sprint in, in Poland, and I think yes. he wanted to have a, a NEOS meetup community there as well. So his talk today will be about NEOS and the digital experience platform. Hi there, <laughs> and welcome to my talk, NEOS and the DX Pen. I'm Shimon, tech lead at 180 Heartbeats. I'm doing NEOS project since 2016. Uh, 180 Heartbeats is an independent creative agency based in Warsaw. And since 2012, it's part of JVM Group. So, what's the topic background? Why this topic? And one, what does it actually mean? Uh, so, during the last years, or, or this years with NEOS, uh, together with our colleagues from JBM Tech in Zurich, we did pretty big websites. And uh, I was always uh, wondering, is it possible to have in NEOS something like personalized content based on context what the user has done on the page. And uh, during the research, I've noticed that uh, suddenly in uh, last year, Gartner, that's a research company, which is uh, creating this uh, magic quadrants, uh, showing challengers, leaders, initiate players, visionaries, has killed WCM quadrant. It's a web content management because they said that uh, uh, customers right now are interested in create in the platforms where they can create the whole experience. They don't want to just uh, manage the content on multiple channels. They want to create experience. And is it possible in NEOS? Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to have contextual content, do you uh, do you need one of these platforms, or you can do it using open source solutions? Uh, you may ask, why should I care? And the question is, uh, do you care about your visitors or your app users? Uh, I bet you do. So uh, uh, you should care about the experience on, on your website too, or in your app, and uh, feed them with the right content, which is tailor-made for this user's group. Uh, so the expert, what you may ask, uh, a little bit story. Uh, at the beginning, there were content management systems. And if company has uh, multiple websites, it has multiple CMSs. And that leads to that, that there was a small silos, multiple small silos in an organization, uh, each responsible for each website. After some time, the big uh, players has appeared responsible for managing the content in all channels from one platform, so like omni-channel solutions, and it was possible to have multiple uh, websites, applications, all managed from one platform. And since few years, uh, 
the new category has appeared, uh, the, the XP, where it's uh, possible to create the whole experience, not only manage. Uh, the experience is created using the data which are gathered from the sites, applications connected to the platform, but as well as uh, using the data from external solutions like uh, CRMs, for example, or other data providers. Uh, Gartner has pretty long uh, description what the XP is. Uh, it's an integrated set of core technologies that support the composition, management, delivery and optimization of contextualized digital experience and so on and so on. It's really hard to understand. Uh, Forrester, another research company, has a nicer definition. Is a software to manage, deliver, and optimize digital experience consistently across every phase of the customer life cycle. But I like the human and normal human language, and uh, it's just collection of tools working together to deliver a better digital experience to end users. Uh, according to Garter, the classic DXP should have. Uh, these three pillars of core capabilities, uh, so experience management and platform. And some platforms has better experience, some has better platform part, another one uh, content management. Uh, and they are big players who are having everything inside, uh, be it from uh, be it into the platform from the beginning. Sometimes uh, these features are there only because of acquisition of smaller players, delivering some part of it. And uh, there's like choice between open and closed. They expect the closed are ones which are, uh, let's say, were all Functionalities are built into the one platform and OpenDXP are the one where you can choose from what's the best of bread. So you can have best content management system, then some another platform for uh, example for marketing automation and so on. And uh, of course, uh, the it depends on from which uh, group the provider is. He will always say that our solution is the best. Uh, but uh, can we have open open source DXP or closed open source DXP? Uh, actually, there is one uh, PIM called DXP, which uh, until uh, I think that until last year it was uh, PIM Core WEM and now it's the XP, so it's showing this shift and it's a uh, it's fully open source but it's closed the XP, so every it's it has built in everything inside. They are uh, Drupal based products, Akaya the XP and Drop Solid, which are closed products. However, they are, they have open DXP architecture, so they are combining other technologies. Like, for example, Akaya has uh, uh, Acquire Mautic, that's a marketing automation platform. And uh, what's interesting, Akaya, Drupal based product, is uh, one of the leaders in Gartner Magic Quadrant. So, uh, I don't. Dropsolid is another interesting case because uh, it's showing that uh, you can uh, build your open source DXP using op fully open source uh, products and uh, in just four steps you can create your own open source DXP. So what are the steps? Let's assume that we have a some touch points for our happy visitors, like multiple websites managed from 
your CMS, some application, maybe where content is delivered through headless API and so on. So we create the content. Then uh, we are gathering the user data and all events what user is doing on the website to customer data platform. Maybe, for example, you know me, which is open source solution or any paid alternative. Uh, then you build segments, create rules, profiles, and so on in, inside that platform and uh, use the context to personalize content on your touch points. So uh, what else you can do is uh, add marketing automation and uh, do the whole cycle. So uh, you can check what user is doing on, uh, on your website, uh, gather all the events, uh, assign him to segment and send email communication to these users who did as who are assigned to a specific segment. Uh, further, I will focus only on these two steps or these two uh, bricks. So uh, we want to capture data in you know me and use it to improve NEOS uh, based website or to improve user experience when he will be visiting the website. Uh, here one clarification what exactly is Apache you know me. It's an open open source customer data platform. It's Java based and event driven or event based. Uh, it uses Elasticsearch as a backend and it's completely lacking UI. So it's like power powerful backend and where you can communicate through the console or REST API. Uh, it has plenty of functionalities. You can do it. Do there uh, every kind of tracking, user tracking, event tracking, download, form submission, goal tracking, pretty much everything you want. You can track everything you want. Uh, you can manage profiles scoring, do segmentation, important stuff, do privacy management, personalization, A-B testing, reporting, and so on. It's in general, it's collecting all data about the user and doing some magic with them, with, with that data. Uh, so it's so much tracking and other stuff. And what about GDPR? So According to GDPR, every every user has to give a consent to the collection of his personal data, has the right to know what data about him are stored, has the right to download them, and the right to be forgotten. So it should be possible to delete the account or fully anonymize it. Uh, and the good news is that uh, you know me is GDPR compliant. It it's possible to mark properties that as personal, then they could be anonymized. Uh, user can uh, send different or re revert the consent, so he can grant consent or deny it, and so on, and uh, download his profile data. And now it's uh, demo time. So in the demo, I will uh, show some kind of proof of concept how you can use Neos together with you know me to display on the page contextual content which depends on user actions. So I have normal Neos website. It's a demo website and the, it has, you know, with web tracker connected through one of the magic packages. And uh, here I'm logged into you know me. 
and displaying the profile list right now and my visit profile profile of my visitor and now uh, every single action which I'm doing on this page is uh, sent to you know me so actually I'm only monitoring the page view actions so member for example I will log into Uh, backend, ah, not the backend, but the members area. We we'll did some pages here, and let's get back to you know me and check what happens in the profile. So we see that uh, it's changed a little bit. So it's showing, for example, that user is interested in the features because I have visited features websites and uh, what is happening is that here on the features branch oh I need to log in here on the features branch in uh, I have uh, defined the interest, which is features one. And that means that uh, whenever user is visiting that page or any sub page actually, it's uh, increasing the interest about uh, this part of the content. So I have also created the same interest or similar interest for the book and here it's wonderland one and uh, the same story uh, it's being copied automatically to all sub pages unless it's uh, marked that it should not copy and uh, every time that i will be visiting these uh, pages it will increase my interest what I also did is uh, created on the home page or used some kind of uh, smart content components. At least I call them smart content. And they have defined different variants. Like, uh, yeah, there are two smart contents elements, one at the top and one below with two variants and feedback. And uh, together with variants, it has a condition defined, which is describing when exactly this content should be displayed. So, for example, uh, I've assumed that I want to track if the user has uh, visited the book and uh, in this case, if he visits the book, I'm starting the goal, which is uh, to visit all the chapters or to make it a little bit simpler to visit the last page. And uh, then here in this variant, I'm, I have specified that uh, it should be displayed when the goal target will be reached, for example and the goal bar by itself is defined in you know me uh, i will show it later further in the presentation and it's the same here so if the someone has visited the book i want to uh, display the content but uh, it will be displayed only if user profile will have property that's uh, read all chapters goal start has been reached so let's go back to the website and to the home page here right now it's a normal home page uh, so nothing has changed i'm visiting the the book and now when we go back to 
you know me and check the profile, you can notice that here's the Wonderland, interest about Wonderland, and that the uh, audit all chapters goal start has been reached. Going back to the home page, we see that the goal started, the book has been uh, visited. So now I will continue watching the book. So here's the one page, second page, third one, and so on. And every time it's sending events to you know me, when I visit the, the uh, profile, check the profile, we see that uh, it's increasing. I can display the event tail. And now, during the visit on the page, it will be displaying the events. Okay, I feel that I have visited something like six of them right now. Or now six of them. And uh, when I go back to the website, it display it's additionally displaying this uh, nice banner. And after refreshing, it's displaying different one. That's because of I have here uh, another smart content element, which is triggered after uh, it's triggered or it's displayed when the user uh, interest about Wonderland is at least six and it's displaying them using the random strategy. So it's displaying random element which has matching condition in this case. And uh, okay, so Let's go here and check here. We have a few more uh, events registered and I will so display some something which is called rule, rule tail. And uh, to finish the our work here, I will go to the book and visit the, the last page. So the one that I mentioned that it uh, will be finishing our goal. So going back to the home page and you have read all chapters. Of course I skipped few but it doesn't matter. Uh, the goal was set to uh, visit the last one. And let's go once again to you know me. And you, you see that uh, there are plenty of rules uh, executed, which uh, uh, changed somehow the user profile or may change the user profile. Visiting the profile again, uh, we can see that uh, there is plenty of stuff happening now. So we have bigger Wonderland interest. Uh, we have reached the goal target a few minutes ago. Okay, so let's get back to presentation and uh, check how exactly is it happening. So uh, right now let's check how it's what was happening behind the scene. So user is visiting the website and uh, asking for HTML page. The Neo CMS is responding with some tracking code uh, with uh, HTML together with tracking code. Then browser is asking context server to load context and it's receiving the context for the current request, which is uh, changing in time and it's depend on user actions. And uh, then uh, if there's a need, a JavaScript callback is executing the 
loading of the content, content, context dependent content from your CMS. And the user is doing some other stuff on the page and it's sending more and more uh, events via web tracker to context server. Now to track the uh, website, we need to put there a web tracker. So it's something like that. It's a uh, you know, me web tracker and it's uh, uh, compatible with uh, Analytics JS web tracker. I think it's segment IO is using it or is describing the some kind of specification. Now, uh, ask when uh, we send a request to context JSON to, to receive context JSON from context server. Uh, what web tracker is doing? It's sending some some kind of uh, JSON payload, which is containing session ID, when it was happening, what exactly was happening, and so on, including, for example, personalizations, some filters. Uh, you can describe uh, if you want to receive information about segments and so on. And uh, in the web tracker, you can uh, set initial page properties. So, because it will be executing a page, so you don't want to have separate page view uh, logging because then you will have two visits. You can add just initial page properties, which will be copied to that uh, request, which is sent to context server. And we can see it here, for example, that it's uh, copied to the event, which is view of the page with specified item ID and all details which are loaded from NEOS properties of, no, from NEOS node page properties. Uh, web tracker, what web tracker can do is track uh, page views, any events, form submissions, identifying user, for example, when he logged into the members area and personalize content content and uh, now let's have a deeper look inside you you know me what exactly is happening there so we have our page and uh, website visits when someone is visiting the page we are sending the events then uh, a lot of magic is happening uh, inside of you know me because we may have of course, we have profiles, we may have segments, we have some rules set with conditions, actions, what should be happening. And uh, we can create custom plugins to extend all of this. And you know me for every request, you know me is uh, responding with context, which is allowing us to display context based uh, content. Now let's go through all the most important uh, stuff and start with the profiles. So that's the profile that you already saw. Uh, and we have interest. It's saying that the user has interest free about features and the uh, Wonderland uh, set to 14. So it already visited all the Wonderland pages plus back the book page plus one that I have created as a copy. Uh, it has started the goal, reached the goal target, so visited the last page. Uh, in this case, it's even have some uh, segments applied. For example, Wonderland fan is someone who visited all the book chapters and it may have some consents. Now, uh, the segment is a group of the users and to be able 
What is interesting, it's calculated in real time. Everything in you know me is calculated in real time. And uh, to be able to have this group of the users, you need to define the condition which is describing when exactly users should be uh, assigned to this segment. In our case, uh, the condition is uh, checking if interest about Wonderland is equal or higher than 13. Another important uh, things are rules. Actually, they are, uh, I would say that they may be the most important stuff because they they make that the whole magic is inside you know me is happening so the rule uh, have two important factors it's condition and action and or actions and condition is more or less the same stuff as uh, in segments because uh, it's just describing when something is happening in this case uh, it's a rule which is increasing the interest about something. So our condition is that the page view event condition and uh, yeah, we should have page view event condition and the target properties on the visited page should have interests, any interest set. And then our action is executing this smart script, which is describing, uh, or it's saying that uh, if there's interest already about, for example, Wonderland, it should be increased by the number of interest assigned to the page. And if it's not, it should be created. Uh, we have plenty already implemented uh, conditions in you know me and it's for example boolean condition uh, much old condition not condition past event condition which is uh, especially interesting because it allows allows you to do s stuff like for example user has visited uh, some page during the last week or last few weeks and so on and uh, yeah i hope this will disappear and yeah and uh, we have plenty of already implemented actions like add to list add to probably add to segment send email send event action and so on update properties action for example so uh, if we would like to for example log in to the profile all data that user is sending through the form we just need to use the proper action and connect it to the form submission event well what i didn't mention is that uh, you can literally send any event from you you know me or any action uh, yeah, any event and you just just send them this, uh, define the name, and that's all. And then you can have action which will be responding to that kind of the event. Okay, now goals. Uh, I showed in the demo that we have a goal that use, which will be started when the user visited the book page and will be finished uh, when the user has visited the uh, the last page of the the last chapter of the book and the goal is something which has two conditions one is start event and another one is target event and it just described when it should be started and when it should be finished and as i showed you before uh, it when the user has reached the goal start or target everything is marked in uh, his profile so how is 
How is it done in Vios actually? Uh, you saw that uh, we have this smart content component, which is having spe variant specified together with condition. And here is, for example, this top banner smart content with two variants and one fallback, which is empty. And uh, what is happening that is literally we are changing this uh, this setup here into some kind of uh, JSON, which is sent uh, as an option or as a properties to uh, you know me web tracker personalize function, and in this case it's saying that strat strategic is random, so we are displaying random content matching the condition, uh, we have a fallback in case of any of the content is not, uh, co in case of condition is not met in any of the content and each variant have its own uh, conditions here. So we have the read six chapters variant. Uh, actually, we have two read six chapter variants with the same conditions, and that's why it's just displaying the random image. Uh, what's happening next is that we have all the smart content elements, for example, multiple of them on the page, and the Below each element, uh, there's uh, just small JavaScript uh, assigning that model, that's JSON on the right to the property. And then we are getting the all, or we are searching for the all smart content components and uh, sending personalized uh, event or triggering personalized on you know me web trackers have giving it a argument give uh, it giving it the object from before as an argument or the property name and uh, when it's receiving the response from the context it's just uh, executing the callback here the callback is pretty simple it's just uh, uh, displaying the item which previously was set to display known, but uh, it's pretty simple. We can, or you can, for example, have uh, loaded through Ajax request or use the uh, this Ajaxify component from Dimitri that. Uh, that can be used to load content dynamically. So you don't have to have it already rendered and just hidden on the website. That was the fastest and the simplest solution, but you can load it in a dynamic way from the NEOS using the uh, ID identifier, which is which you are receiving from context. Uh, you saw that uh, we have this condition specified in NEOS and uh, of course it would be really nice to have uh, some kind of query builder where you can uh, specify condition like uh, for example profile has interest about something exceeding this value and so on uh, but it's just time demanding and uh, for purpose of this demo, we just use the YAML format, which is a little bit shorter and nicer than a JSON. Maybe it's not a big difference in, in case of that simple uh, conditions like that one, which is just uh, checking if visitor has visited at least six pages with Wonderland interest. But uh, with something like that one, it would be a little bit uh, more complicated to to create JSON. It's not 
not so convenient as uh, a YAML. Uh, what is if you prefer JSON, uh, then uh, it's perfectly fine. I don't know if you are aware that uh, you can just uh, use JSON inside of YAML. So as well as it could be YAML, you can as well just pass here a JSON condition. And that one is pretty interesting. It's using the past event condition that I mentioned before, and it's displaying that, uh, or it's checking if uh, in the last five days, minimum twice event has occurred, and the event is uh, that uh, event type is viewed, so the user has visited the page, and event target is specified as this ID. You can, for example, use uh, not the item ID, but uh, path. So if you prefer to use path, it can be path. If ID, then it could be a news ID. Okay, it's conclusion time. So uh, together with you know me, you know me, we can use NEOS to deliver contextual content in real time and it's GDPR compliant way. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, of course, that's just a tip of the iceberg. Uh, there are still plenty of challenges. For example, uh, according to Jira tickets, there is a GraphQL API in you, you know me, but I wasn't able to find the endpoint. Uh, it would be really nice to have a decent UI because, as I mentioned, it's uh, just some kind of the backend. So you can do, you can connect there through the console or uh, using the REST API, but uh, there's no UI. So it would be really nice to have one, for example, as a module in EOS. Uh, I already mentioned it, that uh, we are right now defining the conditions in a way of this YAML files, but uh, having a decent query builder would be really nice. Actually, there are already are packages for that in Vue and React, so I think it's just a matter of configuring them. And uh, of course, creating state-of-the-art personalization UI. So right now, I was using only this uh, smart content element, but I could imagine that it would be really nicer to have it in a way that uh, every component or every page may have its personalization variants, for example, something like uh, content dimensions. Uh, here are some useful links if you want to read more about DXP, uh, Apache, you know me on Mautic, which could be really, uh, and it should be part of DXP setup. If you want to recreate demo by yourselves, here are the two packages. Uh, first one is the you know me. Uh, integration, web tracker, and so on. And another one is uh, for consent management. I didn't show it during the demo, but uh, you can manage the consent uh, through NEOS 2 and then send them to you know me. Okay, folks, uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. In case of any questions, just get in touch on Slack or send me an email. Thanks. And here we are again. Thank you very much, Shimon, for this really interesting talk. And what I really liked about it was that it wasn't just like, you know, uh, presenting an idea and, and someone can probably do it, but coming up with a working example and even a GitHub link. That's pretty cool. That's also some of the, you know, m some of my favorite talks where, you know, someone has an idea and he just plays around a little bit, creates this proof of concept and then, you know, oh, and by the way, I have, uh, 
you know, uploaded this to GitHub, and, and you can have a look as well. So um, we have Shimon. Yeah, you heard it well. by the sounds. It's not Shimon, but his daughter. <laughs> Hi, Shimon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it's as I already uh, uh, sleep time, so. Yeah, and I discovered the rabbit in the background is from Alice in Wonderland, of course, from the Neos demo side. <laughs> right. Really cool. Um, you're, you know, we were following your talk, and it was at the beginning you, you made this introduction of, uh, well, web content management is declared dead by, you know, um, a big an analyst firm, and now we're all focusing on digital experiences. And, you know, we were wondering, hmm, okay, you're talking about scoring and segmentation and everything, then you brought up the GDPR topic uh, as well. Um, is there, um, you know, com combining this interest for information about visitors of your website and how they behave and what they do in order to serve specific content, Where's the balance with the privacy interests for you? Oh, that's a difficult question because personally, I don't have uh, any problem with sharing, for example, my actions on the web page, what I'm doing, maybe not uh, sharing, sharing my personal data. So if, for example, I'm uh, leaving my lead, after filling some uh, content, some uh, form, I would definitely prefer to know that it will be not shared with someone who will later call me because he wants to sell something. But uh, I think it, uh, what is interesting that uh, GDPR is trying to take care of it and that users should be able to get his data and uh, so, for example, if I'm uh, filling the form, uh, it's being sent somewhere. I should be able to download that data and know that this company who has tracked my actions on the website has covered exactly this, this my personal data. Mm -hmm. And I should be able to uh, remove them so I have the right to be forgotten. And that's really interesting for me that you, um, when building this p proof of concept, as, as you said, uh, y due to the GDPR regulations that are in place, you're already keeping that in mind. And, and uh, I, have, I haven't heard about You Know Me before, so that was a really interesting introduction of the service. Robert, did you know that beforehand? No, I did not know it. <laughs> and You Know Me. Um, <laughs> And I mean, uh, there are just a few German words where I, which are exported to the English language. One is probably Freude am Fahren, and the other uh, <laughs> is Datensparsamkeit. So being being uh, picky about the data you share. So it's if and the, I'm I'm one of these guys. But I see uh, lots of opportunities using you know me because uh, it offers some some features like for example for a b testing and and uh, trying out personalized content um, and you don't necessarily need to know something about specific people and you and which i see as a big advantage you don't have to send it to some service provider or google or whatever you can probably host that yourself so did you make some experience um, using you know me for example just for a b testing or for these purposes uh, not yet but i see the same opportunities here so it's uh, perfect to, to just gather all actions and it doesn't have to be only the page visit or form visit you can uh, send actions like uh, clicking on the text on the image or on the any link or, for example, collapsing the and expanding the uh, FAQ item or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can use it to segment uh, your visitors, for example, or check uh, what they did on, on your website because it's creating the profile. So I was showing only the profile par part, but you can check what exactly the user did on your website during all his sessions. And that's a pretty power, powerful tool too. It, and it, uh, what is interesting? Oh, sorry, uh, I finished your sentence. Yeah. 
uh, what is interesting is it's uh, only the backend, so there's no user interface right now. That's something that uh, someone needs to prepare, uh, for example, as a Neos package or as a separate application. There are some already working applications uh, on the market which are Unomi based. And uh, if it's working somewhere else, why shouldn't it work in here? And I think it's definitely possible to to do uh, A-B testing, personalization, or even to use it as some kind of user uh, con consent management platform, where uh, if you are having a database of your users, you need to write and manage all these consents. And that could be done with, you know, me pretty easy. <laughs> now you already answered uh, the question that I had about uh, if you know me comes with a user interface because you know I'm more like the editor type uh, in in the Neos universe. I was thinking, okay, how do I use this? But as I understand, it's uh, an API backend which gives me the the data that I need. And again, what you showed uh, with the Neos integration and the inspector uh, panel, uh, where I can as an editor define how much I want a certain value to be increased when a certain page or element is is visited that creates a nice opportunity as you I think explained in your talk as well or it was in our discussion earlier um, I don't have to you know go to Salesforce somewhere in the cloud or my CRM system which gives me some predefined segments back and then as an editor okay that's the magic that happens somewhere else here I can understand really what happens when these pages are visited I increase that count and when a certain threshold is reached um, I want to display specific content that is catered to that user's uh, needs um, that's that's really cool and I see and I definitely see the niche um, and the use in in the neos universe for this package that's yeah. Yeah. is is you know me easy to host uh, or and and are there something like plugins uh, which which allows you to connect it to other ser uh, services or data sources or something like that? So, yeah, so it's uh, definitely easy to host. It's uh, Elasticsearch uh, based, so every action is uh, being sent to Elasticsearch. If and, we and want the application to have itself, a pretty decent Neos. Sorry, the application itself is that uh, which is is that Java or and the application like itself is uh, Java based yeah. and I think it's uh, hosted on OSGI container or something like that. Yeah. I'm not really the Java guy, but I was uh, quite easily able to uh, run it and play with it, and it shouldn't be more complicated to run it on production. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you see you know me as an alternative to other uh, popular tracking services or tools like Matomo or Plausible or Google Analytics? So um, I think it could be alternative for uh, Google Analytics or Matomo, but uh, I think that it's uh, a little bit different uh, scope of or different area where it's uh, working. I think that in, in Matamo is a great alternative for Google Analytics. So it's uh, the old PWIC, right? Mm -hmm. And for all these companies who want to have uh, their data, even tracking data, not somewhere in the Google Cloud, but locally, like probably most Swiss companies, for example, or in uh, German-speaking countries in general, it could be really good alternative to use it as a backend and not send the data to any external uh, personalization platform, for example. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's uh, that's really cool. Um, have, did you play around with um, when when we in a project had situations like you showed um, where? you have different content and that's you know uh, delivered based on certain rules how do you test that um do you have something like that in mind already uh yeah i, I have some ideas uh so right now for this content uh, i've created just this uh, smart content element which 
is some way of doing it, but uh, I was, I can say that I'm not uh, happy how it's working for the, f or from the editor perspective, that he needs to create another container and put there multiple versions of the copy. I would like to have it uh, in more uh, transparent way for the, for him, like something like creating uh, content dimensions, but uh, that I don't have to specify in the configuration file ahead. And uh, so I already have some questions to Bastian and Sebastian about uh, their topic from the from the morning, and we are already in touch. And uh, about testing, it's what is personal, uh, what is possibly in you know me is uh, overriding the um, data or the user um, profile and sending the request. We can send uh, something like a preset of parameters that we are assuming user is meeting. And that way we can preview the other segment, for example. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking about Neos preview modes. That would probably uh, be, an, be an option to... Yeah, or some fancy part of the new content repository. Ooh, that gives me the chills. <laughs> right. Uh, Robert, do you have an, any more questions? No, I'll, but, uh, but I'll definitely try it out and, and take a look at it. So it sounds interesting. As uh, Shimon just said, uh, you've uh, just pushed that up to GitHub, GitHub and you showed the links in your presentation. So others can have a look and check that out. Thank you very much, Shimon, for uh, sharing your proof of concept with us. Uh, we learned a lot. That was awesome. I really, really, really enjoyed your talk. Thank you very much for taking the time on a weekend, on a Saturday, f um, and sharing that with us. Uh, today here for NEOS conference and I hope to see you again next year definitely and for a NEOS sprint. I don't forget that we talked about a NEOS sprint in Warsaw. Uh, so I'm really <laughs> looking forward to that. <laughs> Thank you too for having me here.